I know a lot of people, including myself, was, we're very fired up about Affinity Design and Affinity range of products. But I was busy doing a little session, recording some video, and when I uploaded it, um, I found out that the sizing wasn't correct because the screen hadn't showed correctly. So I apologize to all the subscribers on the channel um, if that if you've got notification and the video went missing. But then I revisited it and I started looking at how to recreate the video again because I had not saved it. And one of the tools I was using in that demonstration, I started tweaking with it and it started to blow my mind as to what it was doing. And then I had to bump back into my 3D experience. Uh, you know, I work, work at uh, SketchUp with Enscape, Cinema 4D with Blender and that sort of stuff. And it started tweaking for me because I was talking, the topic I was talking on is about light and the importance of light when we're doing visuals because if you don't have light, you're going to have everything black. If you have only light, you're going to have everything blown out in white. So in our real living, we see things with shadows, we see things with highlights, with specular highlight and so forth. And I was showing a tool that is found inside Affinity Photo, which is a live filter and it's a lighting live filter. You, you sort of mimic a live environment. So let me show you what I found and I'll just take you on the journey. So let's say I create a black, oh, let's make that black square. There's a live filter down here. Now I've got a video out where I'm doing, you know, on different videos where I speak about the live filters. This is something that really you should look into. It's got some excellent features because every one of these live filters, if you introduce it in Affinity Photo, you can go and open it up in once that file has the live filter, you can jump across to Affinity Designer and that live filter would be available for you there. So I was kind of focusing on that. So this is the live filter tool and it's pretty much a little icon, not an icon, a, a feature, a live filter there that comes up with the dialog box and it's got a whole lot of stuff. So. Um, I was pretty familiar with uh, the diffuse, the terminology, specular, you know, specular is that sort of bright little light on an object that is showing when there's a light source somewhere. Shininess would probably be considered as roughness or smoothness. And then ambient is the overall light. We're not seeing much of the ambient now because I assume this is just a total black background. Let me maybe just changes to a a different color there we go and i double click on that live filter so if i go there we go okay so you can see ambient gives you ambient light which is kind of all over it's not like this uh, point light so here we've got uh, sorry not point light a spotlight then there's a point light and there's a directional light so there's different lights here again something that those people working with 3D software will be familiar with. Um, then also we can add additional lights. Um, if I pop in another one here, I have another light. So you can create two lights. And for some people, this might be a tool that you weren't aware of. So I click back to the first one. Um, and it's an excellent tool to put into your arsenal when you are working. So I've got two lights shining this way. But that's not what I want to show you. I'll go to the second light and just delete it. So I came upon the, the light tool and everything and I was going through it. That's the distance. This is direction. In the center it would be the light is straight on and shining. Let me just show you. So that's how it would be. And, and if I move it further away from the page, you will see that happen. But most of the time the light source sort of comes from the left. So this, the edge would be the left. And as you move to the middle, the, the light would kind of migrate to being as it's straight, almost perpendicular to the surface. So outer cone, inner cone, those things speak for themselves. But this load bump map got me very excited because in 3D world, when you load a bump map, people might be familiar with displacement maps and all that sort of stuff in, you know, your vector editing software or your photo editing software. 
but in 3D world, your bump map creates, it's a grayscale image, so it, it relates to how, how close to black it is or how close to white it is, the color that it will create a, a sense of, um, how could I put it, a sense of depth. So if the, if the item is darker, if the bump map is darker, it will display in the 3, 3D world as being further away from the viewer. So anything that's lighter will appear closer to the viewer, but then the light source in the 3D model would use that to shine and then mimic a shadow because it will interpret the dark area as being further away and it will create a shadow and highlights according to how the bump map dictates. For me, I got excited about this, but then I started fiddling with it and it was no way I was using it with text and photos and stuff. And then it struck me, actually, why don't I think of it in the light of a bump map in 3D modeling? But uh, where would I put the, the bump map? Do I have to put it on the surface? Do I have to drop it on here? But it's this is part of the lighting here. Yeah. Then it started making sense that because we're introducing this very high-end fancy light in here, the light itself can carry the texture to project it onto the surface. And then I started getting very excited. Okay, and then that's where the journey began and I'll show you the end result and, and then we'll walk through how to get to it. Okay, so let me just go here. So this is how you'd normally have that is a picture of a tile in the background, you know, floor tiles. And this is affinity, just the word. Now you can see I've got a lighting here. Yeah, this lighting was generated in, in uh, photo, affinity photo. I brought it in, added the texture and I'll show you how I created the texture and look at this. I'm going to switch it on. Isn't that incredible? We have a tile texture there now and the text itself is formulating onto it. And all of this is projected from the light that I have in the scene. So if I double click here, you just zoom out, this light in the scene is projecting it. I have it loaded up here as a bump map. And now it makes sense with all these other settings down here. So I can come through and change the texture. I'll just zoom in. I can make the texture to be much more mild. I can flip it the other way. So it comes out like a rough surface. And this is how bump maps work. If you flip the bump map um, with a slider, usually in the 3D software, it will reverse it. So where there's supposed to be depth, it will be raised or interpreted as raised. And if we go the other way, you know, you can become excessive and then it looks terrible. So with bump maps, it's literally putting a, a little bit on there to add the texture. And the beauty of this is I'm not too sure now if I'm making the proper claim, but when we're working with displacement maps inside these uh, 2D programs, you have to generate the displacement map, put it on here, and then you're pretty much limited in it. Here I can go grab this text, move it, I can size it. It still respects the texture, underlying texture there, which is quite phenomenal for what we're doing here. So this is a texture on these tiles. So if you create a piece of hood and want to create the texture with, you know, or a, a sweater with a texture over it, the sky's the limit. So all I'm saying is, you know, go and dig deeper into this piece of um, software that the tool, the lighting uh, live filter and, and get to tweak with it, get to find things and discover things. I, th I think this is so incredible. I'm so hyped up about it. So let me show you from the start to the end how I got to this point. And then you can use your creative space to change things from there. Uh, before I go out of it, I'm going to just double click on this lighting. Just to explain one or two things here so that when we get to the end, uh, I'm not going to go through the explanation again. But if you look here on the texture, this uh, bump map that we put in, Okay, if you see the light from this side here, if I move the light around this way, you'll see that the light is going to be captured on different sections now. The light will be hitting on this side. To maybe show you a bit more, I'm going to go to the color of the light. Let me see, this is a spotlight. I double click this 
Am I able to change this? Where is this going to? Let me. Okay, I am not getting any luck. Let me just close that onto the lighting. Specular color. I am double clicking here, but I am not seeing my little pop out window. Uh, it should pop out. Let me just do this. There we go. I don't know what that was. I think I had to just click once. My apologies, so I don't click twice. So specular is the the actual little shiny areas. You probably see it better from the side. Let me just move the light back here again. If we look here on the side here, you'll see there's the gray, but there's these little lighter colors. That's the specular. So if I go on here and I change the specular color, I can even change it to red and then I'm going to pump up the specular. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, can you see all those red areas? That's literally this this texture is is mimicking the fact that it's because of the the bump map that's loaded. It's mimicking there where you're having the the little red speckles that the light from the left hand side is hitting onto it there. Let me just go maybe to a yellow. There you can see it better. So if I drop down the specular now, um, it will diminish how much of that specular is shining there. Can you see that? Okay, so in the 3D world, you would adjust the specular in the same way. Okay, so I've made it yellow so we could see that there. The ambient color, which is the overall color, of course, is here. And this you can change to be whichever color you want overall. Okay, that's the overall general color. So if your artwork is going to be this color, then you'll do it with the ambient setting. But for now, I'm going to just put everything through to uh, a white and I'm not going to go a, a gray color. I'll just push it through to white specifically and with specular, I'll just do white also. So we'll have the little shiny things over there. Okay, so ambient overall color specular is going to be when the light hits that little raised area that's caused by the bump map, you will see that kind of shine brighter in the color that we choose our specular. And of course, diffuse is the, uh, usually we refer to it as the actual texture itself. Okay, so everything that's happening here is as a relation to this light. So the light is what's generating our entire effects. In the 3D world, like I said, if you don't have a light, you don't have any of these effects. So as soon as we introduce the light now, the light, live light, uh, or what they call lighting, for, um, lighting, is it the lighting? Oh, I must get these terminologies right. Let's go here. It is, yeah, it's the lighting live filter. As soon as we introduce that with the lighting live filter, it brings along all these other features. Okay, so that was a bit of a, a uh, small lesson on um, 3D stuff and lighting. But I think that's the principle. If you understand that, then lots of things in design will work for you. And that's not in design. It's in period design. Okay, it's in affinity. Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to show you how I did it right from the start. So let's close this off. So say we get an image. I've already downloaded something and this is the tile image. Now I recommend that you open the tile image at the size that you are going to use it because you've got to use the same image and the sizing to create the bump map from this. Okay, I'm going to just switch off the background here, the lock. So I've got this image. Now to create a bump map of this I want these lines where you're seeing darker. It must, when I create a bump map, it's, it's using the same image, but I'm emphasizing certain points. Like you see here, uh, these look like grains on, on the tile. So I'm going to open it up in Affinity Photo and I'm going to accentuate where the grains are to be the darker colors and in these grooves, even darker colors. And areas in between, I'm going to make them so that they are white. Um, then everything that's dark is going to appear but backwards offset and everything that's white is going to appear further forward and that's what creates the perception of depth and then when we introduce our light it will pick it up or sort of fake it to make it look like it's got that that 3D uh, depth into it. 
Okay, then the next thing you do is, I'm going to just close off, I'm in photo now. I do the exact same thing, open the exact same picture. I've made a bump map there, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to open the exact same picture. Now if I'm working on this to create a bump map and it's the same size, then I won't have problems when I get back to designer. Because when I use it in designer and I bring in the, the lighting filter, the lighting filter is going to ask me if I want to modify the bump map that I'm loading or do I want to maximize it to its original size. I'll say maximize to original size because then it will fit the actual tiling that I'm using. So I'm not pulling and resizing at any point now. So I am in Affinity Photo. I'm just switch this lock off also. What I want to do now is to create a grayscale image. Okay, so I let me see. I'll go to the adjustment layer and then I will go in and say HSL. And yeah, I'll just go and desaturate this whole image. Now it pretty much almost looks the same, but you'll be able to see that there is a definite um, desaturation of the image. Now I've got it at there. Now I want to do the accentuations of the dark areas, some areas darker and others lighter. I go again into the adjustment layer and here I can go to levels. Can here I play around here? If I do this, you can see all those areas becoming dark. It's a, that's not the route I want to go. Take this area and there we see okay so we, we're getting this is the kind of thing we want to get to and if you're not familiar with um, bump maps and that go and have a look and do look up some tutorials on understanding bump maps there are uh, specific materials um, that you can get for 3d modeling that comes with a normal texture comes with a bump map normal maps displacement maps a whole lot of files that's the standard procedure in the 3d world However, if you want to make your own, you come into your program like this and you tweak it. And there are little standalone programs you can get for free also. I can't remember their names now, but you download a texture and it creates a bump map for you from that. But this is the way we can do it with the Affinity Range products. So I'm going to go just see how things are working, tweak it. Okay, um, that's not where I want to go. Maybe I'll top this up a bit. Okay. So I'll be happy with this. In relation to what I've got here, maybe I should just dip that back. In relation to what I got here now with the levels, is that this style is going to have some sort of uh, pattern that will come through. Because wherever it's a darker color, it will appear that it's further back. And the light that we put in the scene will then cast shadows over the light areas into the dark areas or dark to light. Okay. Um, hopefully I'm not confusing you, but it's it's kind of very common terminology and very common understanding in 3D space. So this for me would be a um, bump map. It's grayscale and literally it's gradients from black, could move from black to totally white. So it's different gradients and that determines the height or the depth of the bumps on the original uh, texture that we're going to work or those styles pictures. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select these here, right click it and say merge visible. Okay, so it, it creates this independent one. I'm going to just delete these originals. So yeah, I'm sitting with this bump map. Um, I'm going to now go and say export and I don't change any sizes. I'm exporting the bump map. So I'm going to say 3B map. Let me just call that B map. Now I'm going to go to my texture inside Affinity. Now I've got to load a light so that I can apply the specific bump map. Okay, I can't apply a bump map onto this texture because where do I load it? Uh, I however don't have a light in uh, Affinity Designer. So I've got to go get it inside of Affinity Photo. And as I mentioned earlier, we are quite fortunate in Affinity Photo to have a lot of live filters, which once we load it here, it's accessible in Publisher, Affinity Publisher or Affinity Designer. Okay, so I go to Live Filters. 
and I go and look right at the bottom it says lighting okay so I click lighting and there we have something here's the dialog box that we saw early on I'm going to close that I'm not going to work with anything on that the only reason that I'm loading it here is to get this lighting filter onto the same file so now I can go file and go right back to edit in designer okay click at the bottom and I'm in designer so if I now go double click on that there we have it there I have the light and I can move the light around okay so I'll just move the light sort of see where I can position it nicely okay and then as we went through all of this stuff you can go do your adjustments okay but now when we look closer it is just the normal background texture so if I switch the light off that's the texture we have okay and if it appears darker and you want it lighter of course you can go with the ambient light if you want to okay but I'm just kind of keeping it dark for a bit of mood now at the moment and it will be easier to show the the bump map when it works so at the year right to the bottom you can see scale horizontal to fit scale vertical to fit so if you go and you fiddle with a different bump map and you drop it here that's a different size to your original texture then of course it's, it's not going to work out well it's going to distort so try and keep your texture and your bump maps and everything the same size when you're dealing with them so it's good to leave that on default because you're dealing with both the same thing, size so yeah I click load bump map okay now I go and look for 3b map I see the one that I did previously has a bit more dark areas but I'm happy with this so let's go 3b map open okay now interesting nothing is happening here and you're thinking okay Rory what is going on you gave me this whole long lecture and now I'm seeing nothing but that's because our texture is on zero pixels of effect when I start to introduce it look what happens isn't that beautiful I'm flipping it the other way it's standing all the dark areas are standing proud of the surface other way the dark areas are standing back of the surface now some people get excited and go all this way but with bump maps you've got to be very subtle to make the thing appear as natural as possible if your specular is too high you can drop your specular um, pull that up and and move around with the the amounts okay so you can create because if you have your specular right up it, it also gets a bit excessive so your specular is just how much those surfaces you see the light now is shining there and it's interpreting that these things are standing proud and that's where it's able to make the things look like they they're all standing out in the, and depending on your bump map your design of your bump map the realism can get quite incredible but here is the other thing also now okay so you can move as we showed you earlier we could actually put in another light let me just add another light let me see I'm going to go add a light um, you take this one maybe this top area but I'm going to tone down this maybe just put that there let's see um, Specular. I'm just trying to see whether the fact that I'm on light 2 whether it's got a different ambient but I think the ambience works for both of them I just think that the distance would determine the, the power and the focus of the light okay so you can have two lights here but that's going to confuse the when I say confuse it's not really confuse the the bump map but it's just going to take the the actual effect of the bump map away but I mean you have the flexibility of doing whatever you want to it's your creative ability so I'm going to go to light number two and just remove that and leave light number one add a bit of specular back in there are we getting some let me see add a bit of specular are we getting enough uh, drop the ambient a bit and a little bit more accentuation of the texture and there we have what we had originally and now you can come with you know typing in what you want to type in affinity um, size that up and we can change the color to 
Where is my affinity? Have I changed the color? No, I haven't. I'm going to change it to red. But have you noticed something interesting? That texture doesn't filter through here now. Okay. And the reason for that is you've got to look in your layers palette where the affinity is. It is on top. So, you know, we look at things right from the top on layers. So, whatever's at the bottom, it if there's an effect, it will affect only at the bottom. So this light is only affecting the bottom texture. So what we're going to do is take the text down underneath it. So it's underneath the light and so the effect works onto it and it's above the background texture. Okay, so don't panic when you don't see the effect happening. But here now, I mean, this is the power. Let's see if we can get a, a logo onto this. Um, Oh, wait, uh, let me just do this as it come to an end, because that, that's pretty much what I want to show you. So let me just put affinity there. Let me see if I can place a logo. Um, which logo can I take? I think I've got a folder with some logos in. Um, is this a PNG? Okay. Maybe make the affinity nice and small down there okay this was one of my clients at a coffee shop so say we're going to do that and we've got to drop it down at the bottom of it so we can see the effect nicely on that and then of course you have all your you know you can change it to your different layers or you can change your opacity and all that sort of stuff maybe soften it up a bit there uh, move that to the top okay. and then on the background layer you can also decide whether you want to you know add any other changes maybe color recolor the thing or whatever you want to do so you can recolor it to uh, let's go for a like a brown where do I have brown do I have brown anyway um, get the saturation down there we go Okay, so if we go now back to the, the light, we could possibly just pop up the specular on it. Maybe bring the light a bit into that area. And there we've got a, a nice kind of a texture design. Now you could do it on wood, you can do it on anything. So I'm very excited about this because it, it just brings that world of 2D and 3D into the space nicely. Um, I know that uh, the other products, the Adobe products, they've come in with a whole built-in 3D stuff. And, you you know, I'm not sure if uh, packages like um, vector packages and that and photo packages should be going into the 3D space. Leave that to the, the professional 3D spaces and just give us tools like, like this where we can add a, a few features and stick to what we can do best in this space. So hopefully this inspires you guys. Um, it's it's just incredible. I mean, you you're now adding things like this with this mood. Let me just duplicate this. I, it's like I don't want to stop with with checking out these features because I, I think they're just so awesome. Um, so we maybe can go from down there. Uh, what am I doing? A bit of oh, you know what. I don't think you're supposed to. Oh, I don't think you're supposed to do a copy like that. I think you're supposed to just add another light in here because if you add a new one, it's not going to have. I don't think it's going to take the settings across. So let me see if I add another light. Um, there we are. Um, take that up there. If that is not cool, then I don't know. Okay, this is not, not worth taking a lot of time. But there we've introduced beautiful texture, add a bump map to it. We've added a decal, rock, rocking billies over that. And we've added two lights. And if you start spending a lot of time with it, you can create some incredible stuff. So guys, uh, go out there and make this thing really cook. I think you can get some phenomenal results. So yes, once again, um, share, the, share the news with people, share these videos with people, send them the links so that they can also learn and we can see more creativity coming. 
So have a fantastic day and God bless you.